Hatman Strikes Back Daily Boxing News, welcome back once again. Turkey Al Sheikh is now openly saying that he's got plans to create a boxing league. In a conversation with TalkSport on Monday, he said, quote, We have a plan for the future to have something like a league. We don't discuss about the belts until now, but in my opinion, around 68 world champions is a crazy number. Now, prior to the Saudis getting involved in boxing, Al Heyman, and then later on Eddie Hearn, both attempted to replicate the UFC model in boxing, particularly Heyman, but Eddie Hearn expressed his desire to do the same. If you remember some of those early PBC shows, they even copied the way that the fighters come to the ring. They didn't have entourages and all that. They would come down a ramp on their own. There was talk of creating a PBC belt. At one point, they wouldn't allow the fighters to bring their world titles into the ring with them. You guys remember that? The WBC and WBA and all the other belts? Because they wanted to then unveil the PBC belt, which would usurp all the existing belts. Never happened. So now the Saudis come along with a much bigger budget than either PBC or Matchroom, and they want to try and do the same thing. Well, they've definitely got a better chance than Al Heyman or Eddie Hearn, but it's still going to be tough. You see, when UFC gained a stranglehold over MMA, they were basically the only show in town. Yes, there were other MMA companies, but it was a new sport, so everything was wide open. Boxing is not a new sport. Boxing is a very old sport. In its current incarnation under Queensbury rules, it's been around since the 1800s. Much, much, much older than this particular version of MMA. There are networks in boxing, an establishment in boxing, in different countries around the world. And the boxing establishment does not want to be usurped by the Saudis. Oh no, they don't. They'll work with the Saudis, for sure they will, because they're throwing all sorts of money around. But they don't want to be made obsolete, at least not most of them. Some of them might be happy to take a check and bow out, but I have to imagine many of them are not going to go quietly. And so in order to have a boxing league, you're going to have to do away with all the sanctioning bodies. And these sanctioning bodies have relationships with many of the promoters and managers and fighters and so on and so forth. You're going to be potentially usurping television networks. Remember, boxing is a global sport. It's far bigger than just the Western world. I mean, you look at a guy like Inoue in Japan. He hasn't shown any interest in being involved in these Saudi shows. He's making loads of money fighting in the Tokyo Dome and what have you. Doesn't necessarily need the Saudis at this stage. You got man like Javonta Davis in the US, Canelo Alvarez. They're not rushing to get involved in the Saudi shows because boxing is well established. There are different boxing establishments, as I've already said, in different countries around the world who are doing their own thing. So I'm not saying that the Saudis can't succeed with their league, but I think it's going to be difficult. And I don't think they're going to be able to get everybody on board at the end of the day. Boxing has a spirit of individualism, which goes all the way back to the very start. And this is something you're going to have to kill. And I'm not advocating that they do, by the way. I like the individualism in boxing. But if you want to have a boxing league, you have to kill the individualism in the sport. In UFC, everybody has to wear UFC branded shorts and what have you. The stuff that they fight in. The UFC model is such that the company itself takes the vast majority of profit from each show. Something like 75%, the remaining 25% is what's paid to the fighters. In boxing, it's the other way around, at least when you're dealing with the big names. After the network takes its cut, and that's often like 50%, what's left is divided up amongst the boxer and their team and the promoter. And with the big names, as I say, they're often taking 75%. The fighter and the promoter's getting 25 or 20. It's the inverse of the UFC model. In boxing, you've got a situation where certain fighters are literally the boss. That simply doesn't exist in UFC. By design, they don't allow any one fighter to be a bigger brand than UFC as a company. Whereas in boxing, that's often the case. Canelo Alvarez is a bigger brand than PBC globally in terms of brand recognition. There's far more people who know who Canelo Alvarez is than know what PBC is. There's far more people that know the name Anthony Joshua than matchroom boxing. So again, to create a top-down UFC style model in boxing, you're going to have to convince all these fighters to give up their independence and this spirit of individualism that exists in boxing. Going all the way back to the likes of Jack Johnson, Muhammad Ali, you know, John L. Sullivan. Boxing's always been like that. It's been a place where if you're good enough, get the right fights and you're lucky enough, you really can start at the bottom with absolutely nothing and make it all the way to the top of the sport. 
where you're actually dictating to promoters and networks. That can happen in boxing. It can't happen in UFC. Impossible. They don't have a glass ceiling in UFC. It's a concrete ceiling. They don't hide the fact that they've got a ceiling. How are you going to sell that to fighters in boxing? Again, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's going to be difficult. In order to make it work, you're going to have to make the existing infrastructure in various countries around the world, let's say like the US, obsolete. I'm talking about their boxing infrastructure. You're going to have to make it obsolete to where they can't make any real money unless they're in the league. You reckon they can do that? Let me know in the comment section below.